Ladies and welcome to another edition of our weekly Torah classes. And whether you're logging on to our incredible Torah site for ladies, ohelsara.com, or if you're logging on to Torah anytime, or if you're a YouTube subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in so religiously. As always, feeding your neshama with the words of Hashem. Hashem should continue to fortify you with tremendous spiritual strengths. Please answer amen to the following because we have a lot of names today. For a zivug hagun, finding a soulmate, Esther Bat Margalit, for the Rufur Shalema of Benjamin Meir Ben Aviva Masha for a successful back surgery. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should take care of him. Bezat Hashem, he has a surgery on April 15th. We hope that it goes well. To Dalia, amen. To Dalia Bat Alice, who we said is a 65-year-old woman in progressing stages of cancer. Arifu Ashlemati Yaakov Yishai Ben Naami, Yohanna Wankmuller. Chaya Bracha Bat Sarah should have a refuah shlema. Doreen Magi Bat Esther, she should feel a happiness and a, a, a healthy mental well-being. Refuah shlema to Sarah Bat Chana. Etlin Bat Yitzh Pearl. Aharon Ben Chava. Sarah Bat Etlin. And Mateo Laura Sarpi. Also for the Ilui Neshama of Dov Ber Halevi Ben Zalman, Zecher Tzadik Livracha. A few days ago was Rav Chaim Kanievsky's yard site. Tremendous Gaon, Talmid Chacham Atzum, Gedol Ador of this past generation. For the Ilui Neshama of Rav Chaim Kanievsky, Zecher Tzadik Vekadosh Livracha. The Ilui Nishmat, Asha Rose Margaret, the daughter of Lydia, Alea Shalom. And the Ilui Nishmat, John Jack. Pring, Allah wa shalom. To the health, success, and parnasa and bracha. Tremendous blessings to Malka Bat Shulam and Shimshon Ben Avraham. David Shmuel Kohen and the entire family. Dvora Sara Bat Anna Rose. Daniel and his wife Valerie and his, their daughter Naima. As well as Ruth and Uven. Regis Silvia and Victor and the daughter Jasmine Ray, as well as Mercy Tengan, Queen Ven, and Enoch. For the special, special protection of Avraham Enoch Mendel, Ben Zohar Teshuva. For Zera Bar Kayama, she have babies Bekarov, Anat Bat Helena. We have special dedications, by the way. Beautiful dedication from Miriam Elisheva Abrams, and Eliana Lior Abrams that they uh, donated for Purim for the remaining hostages in Israel and their families. Thank you so much. And the beautiful dedication from Stacy Quizan. She wrote to the Eshet Chal. She donated, by the way, for a lady to go to the mikvah. And this is what she wrote. To the Eshet Chal, to the woman of valor that will be going to the mikvah, may Hashem grant you happiness, spiritual success, shalom bayit, and protection. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you to all those who have been donating, but unfortunately, there are no emails. You didn't leave an email. Thank you to Edith Chaimov. Thank you to Samiha Matin. Thank you, Judy Carlo. And thank you, Nathan Alcantara. And of course, we have to thank all those who have donated to Torah Hours. Francesca Irby, thank you so much. Shelly Abadi, Kim Clayton, Sherry Friedman, Paula Snyder, Justin and Melissa Spruel, 300 hours of Torah, Selena Martin, 300 hours of Torah, and Nirma Diaz, three, 500 hours of Torah. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Ladies, thank you so much for venturing out on a Thursday night in honor of Sarit Rubinstein's Yoival birthday, which is a very, very holy, a holy birthday. We all wish Sarit a lot of bracha, hatzlacha, parnasa tova b'shefa, shlom bayit amiti, nachat from all her children, shmira miyuchedet, a very very special protection, briut eitana, kadosh baruch hu should just pour down upon you all the good 
for all the good that you try to do for, for the women here in Bet Shemesh and also for the women in Klal Yisrael in general that you're involved with. Uh, Sarit, you're a good follower. I texted Sarit last night. No, this morning? Was it, when was it? No, no, no. Yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. I texted her yesterday. Uh, uh, I said, Sarit, I had a dream with you. I dreamt with you. When she dreams of me, I get scared. <laughs> I'm like, are you going to tell me I'm pregnant? <laughs> That's the... What? All right, you got to tell them about that. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That there was... was I, I, I had birth, can I know four children, two boys, two girls. I felt really... Thank you, Hashem. Hashem knows me. Everything needs to be in order. Everyone needs a partner. And my husband, if we went to an amusement park, we'd all be able to get on a ride with a partner. Like, Hashem knows me. Everything is very... And I was like, it was good, you know, everything was good, everything. I, uh, Baruch Hashem, a couple of years afterwards, got the privilege and the zechus of donating my kidney to a boy who needed a kidney. Wow. And I felt like that's how I was giving life in another way. Yeah. Things were good. And my mother went all ballistic and said, you know I have are 40 and you can have more children and you've donated a kidney. And I said, Ma, I was kind of good for the last couple of years. Like, why are you thinking I'm gonna have more children? She's like, but you could. And I proved to her that you, with, even with one kidney, you can have more children. But wow. I decided at 40, suddenly, that I really want more children. After my, my mother, I think, said it, it like, put an itch in me. And I said, well, I actually do want more children. And I came to the Rabbanin and I said, I would like to have more children. Um, but I'm 40. And I barked on She was scared. Girls, and I'm worried. She is was it, scared. Is it the right thing to do? You know, I, and she says, you know, it's a really good question. I want to ask Rabbi Vlad Yosef's son <coughs> And I want to ask Rav Chaim Kanievsky, who was alive at the time. And um, so I'm going to send them a letter. And in the meantime, she gave me things to do. Things to do before the mikvah, things to do the day of, like really just preparation. So don't do anything to stop. But Hashem, and really always have in your mind, Ritzon Chaya Ritzoni. Hashem, what your Ratzon should be my Ratzon. Anyways, so a uh, uh, week, two weeks, a month goes by, two months goes by, almost three months. And she calls me up and she said, Sarit, I'm so mortified. Never, ever, ever does it take so long <coughs> for the Rav to give me a chuva, And I still, no matter what I'm calling them, I can't get an answer for you. She says, but I want to tell you something crazy. Last night, I had a dream. And you were in my dream. And you came to me and said, Rabbanit, I want to show you my baby. Oh. And you showed me your baby and you said, it's a boy. And you showed me your baby boy. And I said, Rabbanit. You don't have to ask the Shaila anymore. I'm two weeks pregnant. Oh. And then Baruch Hashem, I had a She boy. gave birth to a boy. And I had, she was, she was, the, she carried the baby in. Oh. And then Baruch Hashem, I had a girl, and then I had another girl, Baruch Hashem. So every time she dreams with me inside, I'm like, I'm 15 What about is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, be happy that it wasn't about babies. I just told her, Sarit, I had a dream with you. You have to have a shiur, and it has to be tomorrow night. And then she said to me, which I, the truth is, I didn't know exactly when your birthday was, but I knew it was going to be this week. She goes, well, guess what? Tomorrow night is my birthday. My yoy valir. So I said, then we're having it. And then, you, but you see at the end how Hashem... No, no, no. no. Really? She knows my They're English. very connected. I can really? see. Yeah, yeah, very connected. No. So what happened was today, when you contacted me about some of the logistics, uh, logistics, Deborah didn't let me move it. She said, "On your birthday, you I, I was trying to no, but the truth is, I kept saying ah, it's going to be a problem. Why don't you just keep it? Even if ladies, or whatever, let them go home. What can we do? As long as we have it Thursday night." Yeah. Then you said, no, I'm sorry, but this one told me better. And then we moved it to Sunday. Right. And next thing I know, she texts me. <laughs> Devorah contacted me and convinced me that it's tonight. I'm like, oh, Gavald, <laughs> again. <laughs> but you see that Hashem really runs the world. Right. And as much as you try to move things around to undo his master plan, Hashem always reroutes you to where you have to be. So next time... You're told, Sarit, you have to do this tomorrow night. You have to listen, not to the outside voices. So, I just want to say that this shiur is sponsored by David Burgess, who today, by the way, I couldn't believe it, today of all days, I open up 
the the screen you know that notifies me that there are donations and I see Parsha lecture well, I can't believe this we could have used the Parsha donation so David Burgess sponsored the Shiu Leilui Nishmat his mother he wrote who taught him how to read the Torah oh, oh, nice. imagine that and partially sponsored by Wen Huang I, I love she every every time she she partially sponsors it's partially sponsored by Eli Najau Benishau. I hope I'm pronouncing that right and partially sponsored by Carmen Medina thank you so so very much Hashem should bless our sponsors and keep them safe and protected wherever they are in the world should bless them with tremendous sustenance and health and happiness Bezat Hashem for them and their entire family let's begin this coming week's parasha is Shmini and in it we find a concept that's literally one of the greatest impediments that stands between a person and his purpose in life and it even stands between his success and the blessings he could attain many times when a person wants success in life he turns to Hashem and he pleads please Hashem help me why am I not succeeding and you'd be surprised at Hashem's answers and how he responds to the person through various signs saying my dear child the sun is always suspended in the heavens shining brightly for you but in order to appreciate the light you have to remove your sunglasses seeing the good is something so many people struggle with and it's something that stands between them and the blessings in their life it's also a concept that by the way that we find in Parashat Shmini where the parasha opens up with the words Vayihi Bayom HaShemini and it was on the eighth day Kara Moshe Le'aharon Le'banav that Moshe Allah Shalom summoned Aharon, HaKohen and his sons, Ulezikne Israel, and the elders of Israel. Now we know that the number eight is a number that's Lemala Minatema. It's a number that represents, represents that which is above nature. The eighth day is when special events take place in Judaism, like a Brit Milah. Don't get scared, Sarit. <laughs> we circumcise our sons on the eighth day after their birth the eighth day is that incredible day where we're literally raised above all the other nations of the world it's the day where in the moment of the Brit Milah the new baby enters into Brito Shel Avraham into the covenant of Avraham Avinu Alav Shalom so in our parasha we read how on the eighth day of Hakamat HaMishkan when the tabernacle was going to be inaugurated Aharon HaKohen Allah Shalom came with the heartfelt intention of blessing the Jewish people with the most amazing beracha the most wonderful blessing it's the blessing of Birkat HaKohanim and what does the Pasuk state? Vaisa Aharon et Yadav El Ha'am and Aharon raised his hands high towards the nation and he blessed them and then he descended from preparing the sin offering Chachamim want to know why was it important for the Pasuk to inform us what Aharon was doing just moments before he blessed Am Yisrael does it really matter that he was involved in the Khatat offering before he gave the incredible blessings to Am Yisrael at the moment of the inauguration of the Mishkan? But we know that if Hashem felt it necessary to add this little detail to inform us that Aharon was coming down from the sacrificial offering of Khatat in order to bless the people, that means that there was something about this specific offering of Khatat that actually enabled him to bless the people. What's the connection between this Korban Khatat and Birkat Kohanim? 
Ladies, tonight we are going to learn an amazing idea. It's actually the secret to the Geula. So if you want the Geula to come this month, listen very closely. You see, Aaron Kohen taught us that if you want to bless the people, you have to be vayered me'asot ha'chadat. You have to come down from the high horse you may have been riding on, from the high tree you're climbing, and begin to see in people the good that they possess. Only then can the word vayevarchem come to pass. Only then will you be able to bless the people. But as long as you continue to see the hatat, the sins and the fallacies in people, without also seeing the good that they possess, you can't possibly and with earnestness offer them a genuine beracha, a sincere blessing. If you want to be able to give a person a real beracha, you must first do what the Pasuk here teaches. You have to come down, you have to humble yourself and stop seeing the sins of other people. Only then, only then can you bless that person with the greatest blessings. This was the beautiful message that the Torah HaKdosha wished to convey. Aharon HaKohen had to see the good in the nation and to focus on that good in order to bless them. And that's a lesson of life. As long as I still see in you a chatat, as long as I concentrate on all your indiscretions without seeing all of your good, as long as I'm focused on the issues and the troubles that you have in your life, so long as I concentrate on your deficiencies without realizing all the strides you've made to move forward in a positive way, there is no way I can genuinely bless you. Therefore, the Torah is asking, you want to know when the word Vayevarchem, and he blessed, can apply and will manifest in your life? Vayered it's when you'll be willing to come down, when you'll be willing to stop looking at people as if you're viewing them from above, from a higher place. It's when you'll step down from the pedestal that you've placed yourself on. And when you come down and stop seeing only the sins of the people, when you'll see them in a good light as well, that's when you'll be able to bless them. That means many of us are giving fake brachot. This is indeed an amazing idea because this is truly the mantra of all the other Kohanim of Am Yisrael who descended from Aharon. You see, when the Kohanim, when they stand up in order to bless us, it's not that they're standing there casually and nonchalantly blessing us, no. Because notice the beracha that they recite right before they bless us. What do they say? Baruch Ata Hashem, blessed are you God, Elokenu Melech HaOlam, our God, King of the Universe, Asher Kiddishanu Bikdushato Shel Aharon, who has sanctified us with the holiness of Aharon, Vetzivanu, and commanded us, Levarech et Amo Yisrael, to bless his nation Israel, Be'ahava, with love. You hear this? You know what that means? The Kohanim are telling us that if you want to give a bracha, if you want to offer a blessing to a person, you have to focus on the ahava, on the love that you should feel for him and the good that you have to find that resides in him. Otherwise, you won't be able to bless him or transmit your bracha in the proper way. And where did all these Kohanim receive this beautiful idea from? Where did this idea of blessing the people with ahava, with love, come from? Where in the Torah do we see that ahava should be the prerequisite, prerequisite of blessings? We find it here in our parasha. 
in the Hakamat HaMishkan, at the inauguration of the tabernacle. It's in Parashat Shmini that the original great Kohen Gadol Aharon comes to bless the people, but before he does, the Pasuk tells us that he had just come down from preparing the Korban Chatat. Vayered me'asot ha'chatat. He had to come down from his place of spiritual authority and he freed himself from seeing the Chatat, from focusing on the sins of the people. And as a result, he was able to see the good that they possessed. And of course, all the other Kohanim are standing there and they, they saw this and they decided to follow suit. They decided that if they're going to be the ones to bless the Jewish people in the future, they must do so with great love in their hearts. When I approach another Jew with love, that's when I can see the good that that Jew truly possesses. And that love that enables me to focus on the tov, on the good of that person, is what enables me to genuinely bless him. Otherwise, I cannot sincerely offer him a bracha. And I think that this was the secret behind Aharon Kohen and his legacy in Am Yisrael. As we all know, Aharon was Ohev Shalom. He was a lover of peace. And he was Rodef Shalom. He did, he, he did his best to pursue peace. So how would you be able to create peace between two people if you don't approach both sides and highlight the good that each person possesses? That's the way Aaron created peace. For example, <coughs> when a couple was having a hard time getting along, he would approach the husband and he would say, you know, your wife really loves you. She really wants to be close to you. And she said the most wonderful things about you. She feels terribly about the fact that you are not getting along. And then, hi, you came just in time for the part about the husband and the wife. <laughs> and then he'd speak to the wife and say, you don't know how much your husband loves you and how he spoke about all your amazing qualities. He wants to see you happy. He wants to do whatever he can to correct the blunders of the marriage because he loves you. In doing this, Aharon was teaching this couple to focus on the essence of the other person. He encouraged them to concentrate on the good that the other possessed inside of him, and he did that in order to restore not only the peace in that marriage, but the ahava, the love. And when peace and love are restored, that's where the beracha, that's where the blessings can be found. Blessings that can actually come to fruition. That was the power of Aharon Kohen. Now some people might be thinking, oh, this is all very nice, but we are not Kohanim. And you're right, you're not Kohanim. But you can learn from the actions of the Kohanim who were our spiritual leaders. What we're learning about the Kohanim and how they blessed Am Yisrael by focusing on their good is the master key that was given to us by Aharon Kohen that can unlock worlds of brachot and yeshuot for all of Am Yisrael. Because if we want to bless someone, we have to be vayered. We have to come down from the place of looking at the sins of other people to begin to see the good in them. And when you can do that, you will have such a koach, such a powerful tool in your mouth of blessings that you can give that will yield tremendous hatzlacha in that person's life. So I'm here to tell you that this concept we just discussed doesn't belong exclusively to the Kohanim. This idea is available to anyone who wants to build someone in their life, who wants to see the spiritual success of others, who wants to see miracles and Yeshuot flourish in Am Yisrael. This concept is true for a Rebbe in a Yeshiva and his student. It's true for a parent and his child, for two friends, for neighbors, and it's even true between a person and himself.
You see, if you spend too much time harping on the negative aspects of your life, of your personality, while trying to improve, to change and do tshuva, if you cannot seem to let go of the negativity that you're holding on to, you will not be able to accomplish much. You won't have the ability to climb higher or to mend what's broken. You won't be able to heal the pain or move forward in your spiritual endeavors because you have an anchor wrapped around your leg that's pulling you down. That anchor of negativity, of negative thinking, makes you sink into an ocean that was meant for you to swim in, not to drown in. And we see this incredible idea with Yitzhak Avinu, alav shalom. Yitzhak had a son named who? I knew you'd all go to Yaakov first. <laughs> You're good people. Yaakov had a son named Esav, who he knew good and well was an evildoer. The Midrash of Bereshit Rabbah tells us that it was on the night of Pesach that Yitzhak Avinu Alav Shalom wanted to offer the greatest and most incredible blessings of this world to Esav. That night, where all the Shefa, all the heavenly abundance and bracha comes streaming down and influences the world for the entire year. The night where the key of material blessings is poured forth into the world was the night that Yitzhak wished to bless his evil son, Esav. So he instructed him saying, go out and hunt for me two sheep and prepare them in the manner that I enjoy eating so that I can bless you. Now that's strange. We all know that Yitzhak was an incredibly wealthy man who inherited his father Avraham's great fortune. Yitzhak Avinu had a huge stock of cattle, of sheep, of goats. He could have simply told Esav, go to the backyard, slaughter two sheep, and prepare my meal the way I like it. Why did Yitzhak ask Esav to go out to the fields and actively hunt for two animals that he had in his backyard? What was the purpose of that? Now, we know <clears throat> that when Asav went out to hunt, that gave Yaakov Allah shalom, ample time to disguise himself as Asav, to go into his father's tent and receive the blessings that the deserving son should be blessed with. And that's what happened, by the way. Yaakov walked into the tent with two sheep that he took from the backyard <laughs> that his mother prepared and he received the most incredible blessings. <coughs> but Chachamim then wonder, why did Yitzhak send Esav out to hunt for these animals when he had them in his own backyard? The answer is amazing. You see, Yitzhak knew who Esav really was. He knew he led his life in an immoral manner. He knew he was a terrible evildoer. So Yitzhak wondered, how in the world am I going to be able to hold my son's hands, the son who is such a sinner, and offer him the greatest blessings of this world? How can I do that? So Yitzhak decided as follows. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to take advantage of Asav's kohot, of his strengths. And I'm going to redirect those kohot of being a hunter for the purpose of killing to serve his father in the mitzvah of kibud avaim instead, to honor his father and mother. I'm going to work with this child of mine. I'm very aware of his evil nature, but I'm going to channel his evil impulses towards the good. I'm going to help him use his challenging nature for the purpose of some good, to do the mitzvah of kibud av, to honor his father. So yes, 
although I have an array of animals in my own backyard, it's not about the animals I own. The reason I am going to send Asav out to hunt is so that I can tell him honestly, my dear son, I want you to use your talents and your strengths for the good. Instead of hunting for the sake of killing, I want you to hunt for my benefit, to serve your father. I want you to come back from the field with two sheep for the sake of the mitzvah of honoring your father. And I want you to do it so that I can peer into your heart and see even an ounce of good that resides in you. And when I'll see that good, when I'll focus on the mitzvah that you were happy to perform in honor of your father, that's the moment I'll be able to give you great blessings. But as long as I still see the evil in you, I will not be able to bless you. So Yitzhak did what Aharon Cohen did years later in our parasha. He was vayered me'asot achatat. He had to first come down from the sins of his son, and only then, when he stopped focusing on Asav's evil, evil ways, he was able to find some good in him. And only then he felt he could actually bless him. And that's an incredible idea. It's a lesson to every parent, to every teacher, to every rebbe, to every principal. Your role is not to change anyone because the teva, the nature of a person, was pre-programmed from the moment he was born to the world. Your job is not to change a person. Instead, you should try to understand how to reroute him, how to direct all his positive traits and strengths towards a direction that will benefit him and also enlighten you with all the good that that person truly possesses. If only we could see the truth inside a person, all the good that truly resides inside of him, we'd be able to bless him with a genuine bracha that could redeem him from his individual state of galut and create a national redemption for Am Yisrael. Are you with me? Aviva. You know, many times in our relationships with people, we hear the words, focus on the good, focus on the good, right? Right? But we never learned how that can create a redemption. How that can facilitate blessings and actually bring them to fruition. We didn't know that in order to do that, we need to be vayered me'asot hachatat, that we have to come down from seeing the sins of others in order to view them in a positive light. See, unfortunately, as we climb the ladder of Ruhaniyut, if we're not humble enough on the way up, if we don't work on humility as we rise in spirituality, we can look down on people from on top, and it's going to be very difficult to see the good that they possess. All we'll see is their negative traits all the sins that they're involved in and the spiritual instability of their life. So our job is not to change a person or to reprogram him. Our job is to reposition his strengths to what he should be. Our job is to attempt to seek out, to do a bdika, a serious search of that person's neshama and to find all the kohot he possesses and then help channel those strengths to some positive purpose so that not only him, but you, you can finally see that he is truly good. And I want to give you an example of what I mean. If you remember, Sarit did an evening here in Bet Shemesh right after the war broke out and we wanted to inspire people. And we did Kabbalot, if you remember, we sold the uh, tambourines. And we had many women, and then we blasted it all over, and people were doing it all over the world, getting together groups and doing this. 
I want to read you, because you started the whole thing and it's your birthday tonight, I want to read you two emails that I got. This is the good in Klal Yisrael that we have to focus on. Esther Kaponin from Finland wrote to me. I watched the last year about the Kabbalot. That was that thing we did. Here are the Kabbalot I have taken upon myself. Number one, to promote Sneut in our Jewish community and create the MDF Modesty Defense Force campaign over there. Number two, I took upon myself daily Tehillim 23 uh, plus Tikkun Gadol and Tikkun Klali. Number three, to increase tzedakah, giving clothing and food to the poor. Number four, continuing with full force of the Giyu process. She's in the process of converting. And Bezrat Hashem to be converted as scheduled with my rabbi. May Hashem bless you and the whole Ohel Sarah team. See the good in people. Here's another one. Shalom Rabbanit Sarah from Tippi in, I think, Massachusetts. We followed your protocol exactly. I sent out the invitations of thousands of people in my town in Sharon, Massachusetts, and one woman who I needed to ask Mechila from showed up. Something happened between us almost 16 years ago, and she gave me Mechila in our group yesterday. Wow. Afterwards, we danced with tambourines. Please see the attached attach pictures. Thank you for leading this initiative and for mentioning Massachusetts in your latest video. Mm -hmm. This is the good of Am Yisrael. This is the good. You hear? Yitzhak sent Esav out to hunt for the right reasons. He wanted to redirect his kohot so that he could see the good he possessed inside of him so that he could bless him from a place of genuine love. You still with me? Mm -hmm. There's a pasuk in Parashat Shmini that's an incredible eye-opener. The pasuk tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu became very, very angry with Elazar and Itamar, the sons of Aharon. <laughs> what does the pasuk state? Listen. Ve'et se'ira hatat darosh darash Moshe. Moshe thoroughly investigated the sin offering of the he-goat. Ve'hine soraf. And behold, it was burnt. Vayiktsof al Elazar ve al Itamar bene Aharon hanotarim lemo. And he was angry with Elazar and Itamar, Aharon's surviving sons, saying, Oh, Moshe Rabbeinu was angry with Elazar and Itamar, the sons of Aharon who survived because his other two sons, Nadav and Avihu, died when they entered the Kodesh HaKodeshim intoxicated. So El Azar and Itamar were the surviving son, sons of Aaron whom Moshe is about to rebuke and give them Musar. And in this Pasuk that I read to you, he's clearly angry, Vayiktsof. Well, listen to the words that Moshe Rabbeinu uttered to the sons of Aaron. Madu'a lo achaltem et achatat bimkom hakodesh. Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the holy place? <laughs> Let's look at the Rashi Tevot of these words. Madu'a lo achaltem et achatat bimkom hakodesh. The words, Sarit, I'll let you do it. Madua lo achaltem rashe tevot. Madua. Amen. Said Sarit. No. Madua. I'm asking for a lifeline. Madua. Yeah. Madua rashe tevot. The first yafe lo. Amen. Achaltem. Mem lamed aleph spells what word? This? Yeah. What does male mean? Four. Very good. Then we're left with the words et 
החטאת במקום הקודש. א', ה', ב', ה'. What word is that? אהבה. Which means? This you mean? משה רבנו was very angry with his nephews. He was very upset. But when he came to rebuke them, the Torah tells us he did it. מלא אהבה. He was full of love for them. If a person is not מלא אהבה, if you are not full of love, you cannot possibly build a person. redirect or guide him and get the results that you want. This is an incredible lesson and it's something that can bring about the Geula, believe it or not, and I'm going to explain to you why. You see, many of us live our life with a terrible syndrome called, I am not good enough. Many of us walk around with a smile and we have the ability to enjoy and to laugh, but our self-worth is suffering. Many people have an unhealthy self-image. So many of us go through life feeling as though much of what we do is just not good enough. And therefore our goals and our purpose are abandoned. And as a result of how we view ourselves, we veer off in the opposite direction that Hashem intended for us, and we miss all the benefits and all the blessings that are being sent our way. So what we're learning today is a lesson we can apply to ourselves. Before we receive the blessings of Hashem, of which we want should truly manifest in our life, we must see ourselves in a positive light. Many of us tend to focus on all the items of life that we haven't yet achieved, and that causes us to hold on to a negative view of ourselves. That view turns into a belief. We begin to believe the negative thoughts about ourselves that we embrace. And that belief crushes our spirit and stunts us, not only from moving forward into a brand new day, it prevents us from seeing the truth of who we really are. Inside every single one of you here in this room, there is an abundance of good, of talents, of kohot nefesh of internal strengths that you possess and that you were born with. Each of you has a world of good tucked away beneath layers of negativity and unconstructive pessimism. Instead of taking the holy elements you possess to construct a mishkan for yourselves, a holy tabernacle in which Hashem's blessings can enter, Instead of believing that you're worthy, you create a stream of damaging thoughts that evaporate and form into gray clouds that constantly loom over your life. And those clouds become barriers. They are mechitzot. They are walls that come between you and Hashem. between you and someone important in your life, and between you now and all that you're meant to be. You know what those gray clouds do? You know what those barriers do? What's your name? Shibolet. Shibolet, Shibolet Shual. <laughs> Shibolet. <laughs> They prevent you from seeing the emet. about Hashem and all the good that He's bestowed upon you. Those mechitzot block you from seeing the good in other people, and they stop you from recognizing the good and the holiness that you possess. The sad result is that instead of living the life you're worthy of living, instead of appreciating the goodness of your soul, Instead of ascending to your majestic position of a bat melech, the daughter of the king, you end up living a self-proclaimed existence <coughs> that turns into a frightening dream. My dear friends, the spiritual confidence of Am Yisrael is broken. 
and putting our pieces back together again can and will bring the Geula. So one of the ways that we could restore our neshama, one of the ways to rebuild ourselves is by learning how to be certain concerning the spiritual decisions of your life that you make and to be confident that you made the correct spiritual choices for yourself. You cannot be afraid of your own shadow, of the shadows of doubt and insecurity. You need a spiritual backbone. You need to work on your spiritual self-esteem. Why do I tell you this? Because so many women that I speak to are sadly lacking the full awareness of who they really are and how much good they possess. Someone or something out there shattered the self-confidence of these women. Someone in their life is not providing them with positive spiritual reinforcement. Therefore, many women are second-guessing themselves in almost every aspect of their life, but especially their own self-worth. So I tell you, if you ever meet a person like Humpty Dumpty, who fell off the wall and broke into many pieces. Your job is to pick that person up and put him back together again because the entire nation depends on it. That person has strengths and abilities that he can utilize to elevate himself and to create blessings and a redemption for Am Yisrael. And if someone doesn't put that person back together again, if someone doesn't bring out in that person all the good that he could achieve, all the merits that he could create for the people, how can the Geulah manifest speedily? How can Mashiach reveal himself when we're in a lowly state within ourselves? We need to rise to the occasion of redemption. And we must do so with great confidence and with the fortitude of a people who were chosen for this great moment in the history of the world. We must usher in the Geulah, not as miskenim, not as the poor downtrodden Jews whom God had to send the Mashiach because of their lowly state. No. We must greet the Geula as the majestic children of the one true God, as princes who are a beacon of light to the other nations of the world, as the holy nation of Hashem who has survived this difficult galut and has done so with great sacrifice. We cannot step into the Geula as miskenim, but as the Bnei Melech, as the children of the King. But how do we do that? How can we help ourselves and others in this regard? How do we revive the soul of the nation? How can we resuscitate somebody's neshama, including our own? You know how we're going to do it? Tonight we're starting this mission. Be'ahava. The great deal of love with the compassionate heart that Am Yisrael possesses and with a keen focus only on the good. That's how we're going to do it. We could bring the Geula speedily in our days by seeing the good in Am Yisrael and building on that good time and time again. We have to come down from seeing the sins in ourselves and in others. And we must begin focusing on all the mitzvot our fellow Jews are involved in. We have to be more aware of their altruistic achievements. We have to remember the good that they're striving for. And then, Vayevachem, and then you have to bless them. Be'ahava. With all the love in your heart. That genuine blessing we offer each other that comes from a place of Ahava, of being Jews who are Ohave Yisrael, can manifest in the world as a blessing for the entire nation. You hear what I'm telling you? Yitzhak Avinu said, well, if I have to be honest with myself, I cannot deny the fact that my son is a crook. He's a asha. He's involved in all kinds of undesirable acts. I know who my son is. I know what his flaws are. 
But I also know that even as Sav has the ability to channel all that energy and his strength to the side of good. And if he uses those kohot to accomplish a mitzvah that I'm going to ask him to engage in, not only will he feel the good that he carries within him, but I will afford myself the opportunity to see the good in him. And when the good surfaces and I see it, I'll be able to bless him with the ahava of a father. My dear friends, when you bring out the good in another person, you just gave him the greatest blessing in the world. You just gave that person himself, his truest self. You gave that person the opening to see who he really is and what he's meant to be. You just offered him a chance to find and achieve his purpose in life. You just removed those gray clouds that were hovering above him and you offered him a chance to appreciate the light. And the same is true for you. When you reach into your core to find the good in you, you will be able to succeed in life. You'll be afforded a new pair of eyes that you can see the world and your life through. And it's then that you'll be able to appreciate the sun that shines brightly upon you. The sun that HaKadosh Baruch Hu suspends in the heavens for you in order for you, for you to be able to see, to truly see your life through the lens of Shamaim. When you begin to notice all the good you truly possess and to believe in that good and function from that place of good, the clouds of doubt and uncertainty will vanish. The mechitzot of life, the barriers that were once there will fade away into the background of the greatest light. And then you'll be able to see others through the prism of hope. You'll begin to see in others what you discovered in yourself. And when you do, stop for a moment and bless that person be'ahava, with love. You know what's going to happen as a result, ladies? When Hashem sees how Bnei Yisrael are focusing on the good in themselves and in their fellow Jews, when He sees that we're busy lifting each other up by seeing the good in one another, when He witnesses the genuine berachot we are offering each other and that we're doing it be'ahava, then midah keneged midah, Hashem will also engage in vayered me'asot ha'chatat. He too will come down from seeing our iniquities and he will focus on the good of his children who are trying to achieve so much dafka in a state of darkness in this difficult time of galut. And then you know what he's going to do? Vayevarchem. He will bless us with the greatest blessings of all time, which is the blessing of the final Geula. So what we're learning today could very well help us usher in the redemption sooner than later. If this could be our mission as we enter into the month of Nisan through Pesach, we might be zaycha to witness and experience the Geula this month. But we have to be determined to come out of this galut that we place ourselves in every single day. We have to release ourselves from the prison we've confined ourselves in, from the shackles of negativity, and we have to declare out loud, I am a good woman. I am a woman who is sensitive and kind and giving I am a woman who loves Torah and I love Hashem. I am a woman who does her very best to serve the Ribbono Shel Olam even, even amid all the challenges and obstacles of my life. I am worthy. I am the daughter of the King and I am holy. Hashem will redeem me because I am redeemable. I am coming out of this galut. Every woman here must make it her mission from this night on to see the good in herself, to believe in the good she possesses, 
and to begin focusing on the good of others. From this night on, we should start offering berachot to one another by seeing in each other all of the good that we possess. And when we bless each other, make sure it's done be'ahava. Believe me when I tell you that if you start doing this, not only will you begin to feel differently about yourselves, there will be shalom that's created between you and others. Your confidence and the self-worth of others will soar and you're going to begin to notice how the brachot that you offered others and the blessings that you received manifest themselves here and now in your life. So instead of breaking each other down, we have to learn to build each other up. That's what Parashat Shmini teaches us. Vayered me'asot achatat. We have to come down from seeing the sins of people and rise up to believe in the good that they possess. And like Yitzchak, when we'll start seeing the good in others, we'll develop a love for them and we'll be able to bless them be'ahava. One more point and Muntis I will end. The Tiferet Shlomo Alava Shalom accentuates this point in Parashat Shmini and explains this idea, like we said, is not exclusive to the building of other people. I said it also concerns the person himself. You have to be vayered me'asot achatat for you. You have to learn to let go of your errors in life, of your mistakes, because if you don't, it's going to be very difficult for you to arrive at vayevarchem. You might just pass up the blessings that are waiting to come down to you from Shamayim. If you continue to live seeing only your mistakes and deficiencies, you're going to be feeding your Yetzirahara who's all too happy for you to remain shackled and free of any confidence. And you know what's going to happen? The moment you're going to want to step up to do something good, the moment you'll be inspired to act on a mitzvah, the Yetzirah is going to jump out at you and say, uh, I got to pick some. <laughs> Dvor, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm picking you. <laughs> the Yetzirah is going to jump out, he's going to say, wait a second here. Who do you think you are exactly? Who are you trying to fool here with your righteous ideas? Tell me, you don't remember what you did yesterday? Not you, we know you, Tzadikah. <laughs> you forgot where you went last week on vacation? You don't recall who you spoke about a month ago in a not nice way? Are you kidding me? You? You want to be involved in this incredible mitzvah? Come on. You're a faker. You're a fraud. You're a hypocrite. Lo at shalom. And after the Yetzirah has completely crushed your spirit with the ammunition that you placed into the palm of his hands, after he places the shackles back on your feet when you try to remove them, you suddenly feel frozen, as though you can't move, as if you're fixed in your place and you become stunted from doing the mitzvah that you wanted to be involved with. All the good you wanted to achieve and could have achieved because of the pos positive thoughts that you should have had, what happens? All those thoughts are now together with you in the prison cell that you've locked yourself in. Tishmei tov tov ma shani omeret lach. A Jew without confidence, a Jew without a healthy self-esteem, a Jew without conviction is a Jew in the galut, is a Jew who is truly not free. He is an avid, he is a slave to his negative thoughts, to his yetzahara and his false beliefs about himself. Says the Tiferet Shlomo, there is a concept in Judaism that teaches us. If you have an opportunity to do a mitzvah, Sarit, like you had tonight, don't let it pass you by. 
The mitzvah was hand delivered to you from Shamaim in order to offer you schuyot. But the Tiferet Shlomo says we could interpret these words of en ma'avirin ala mitzvah in another way. How? He says, listen to the words. En ma'avirin al mitzvah means don't place your previous avera on the mitzvot you wish to engage in. Don't let all the mitzvot that you want to engage in pass you by as a result of the averot you once committed. En ma'avirin. Don't allow the averot to be used as a justification to let the mitzvot slip through your fingers. Many times when you want to engage in a benevolent act, even a heroic one, a barrage of averot suddenly floods your memory and it breaks your spirit. Chachamim say you have to let it go. Calm down from those sins and stop allowing them to be the measuring stick of who you are because Hashem is waiting to bless you with so many merits. You could accomplish so much when you release yourself from the iron chains of falsehood, from the sheker of who you've convinced yourself that you are. Instead, you could bind yourself to the truth of who God created you to be. So close the chapter in your life that reads, The End, and open a new page that says, Living Happily Ever After. Between the battle of you and yourself, you have to learn to stand up for yourself, to believe in yourself, and to know who you are. You are the daughter of Hashem. You are the princess of this nation. You are the Malka, the queen that can bring about the salvation for our people. You are the Bat Melech who is creating the merits that will redeem us. Stop giving into the carbon dioxide of negative thoughts and start breathing the oxygen of goodness and wohaniyut that Hashem releases into your atmosphere. Stand up for Yanashama for the majesty that resides in you, for the crown of glory that was placed on your head. Stand up for Hashem who loves you and wishes to bestow the most genuine blessings upon you. If you want to do away with all the negativity and all the falsehood that you've encountered and all the pessimism that surrounds you, you must be involved in good, in tov. You have to pick yourself up, go out there, and accomplish all the good you were born to achieve. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be standing at your side, assisting you in that Tov, and all the good that you wish to realize. So we have to turn to Hashem in these days prior to Nisan, and through this coming month, and say, Hashem, only you know my heart. You know how much I love you and how much good I want to accomplish. Only you know how I truly wish to live my life with purpose and with direction. I know you sent me down to this world for a mission. I know I have a tachlit, a spiritual purpose that only I can achieve. But please guide me. Please take me by the hand and lead me in the direction of all the good that resides in me so that I can know without a doubt what I'm meant to do in this world. If you're the one who placed my soul inside of me, a neshama that is holy, if I carry a piece of you inside of me and you are tov umetiv, you are good and you offer only good, that makes me good. That means I can accomplish so much good in the world. So please Hashem, Yancheni b'magle tzedek. Please lead me to the most benevolent place, lema'an shemo, for your sake. And in that place of seeing the good in me, I know that I can do anything because your goodness is inside of me and you are beside me. Yiratzon, may this coming month of miracles, blessings and redemption inspire our hearts and souls to feel all the good that resides within us. May that good reflect upon others so that we could see all the good they possess 
And may all the blessings we offer one another reflect back at us this month so that we could experience all the good Hashem has to offer that resulted from all the good that we are now going to project into the world. May we see the greatest good generated from all that good we were involved in and together as one nation be blessed with the final Geula Be'ahava. Amen. 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 Amen.